Well, thank you everyone for joining today. I'm very excited to share information about the Healthcare Administration Management Program that we are launching at the London South Campus this fall. We've had such incredible interest in this program already. And I have to say our community is very excited for this opportunity as well. Um, we started talking about this program uh, in the fall of last year and started setting the stage for what it might look like to bring this to London South. And what we did was we reached out to our broad and vast medical community here in London, Ontario, and we asked them what kind of skills are they looking for for healthcare managers um, here in Canada, as well as what best practices can students learn to manage their own clinics elsewhere. And we were, we were given so much information, such a broad um, understanding of what is uh, in their mind the key skills that students need. So I'm gonna share a lot about that with you today and how the, we were able to uh, take what we learned from them and put together this amazing program. So first, before we get started, uh, I wanna tell you a little bit about me. Uh, and my background. So uh, I've come to healthcare administration in kind of an interesting way. And actually, it's what brought me to London, Ontario as well. Um, so my educational background is in political science and communications. I did my undergraduate degrees in those two areas. I did my master's studies in leadership studies at the University of Guelph, just down the road from London, Ontario, um, as well as a postgrad certificate in human resources. And I also have certificates in negotiation and arbitration. Um, however, uh, over a decade ago, I met my husband, who's a physician. Uh, he's a, an ICU and a GI doc, so stomach and intensive care doctor. And when I met him, he was uh, in medical school and getting ready to practice uh, somewhere in, in the world. And um, his career has moved us around quite a bit in Ontario and in the United States. And through that time, uh, he's, he's created a medical corporation. And so on top of my own teaching and my own work, uh, I have been managing his medical corporation as well. So that's what brought me into healthcare administration and where I had to learn the skills that were necessary to help manage a very big, busy and diverse practice. Um, his practice is academic in nature as well, where he's affiliated with Western University. So understanding those nuances as well of working in a healthcare environment, but also an academic setting. So uh, his job brought us to London, Ontario, and uh, we really enjoyed living in this community. We've been here about six years. And what I love about London is the opportunities that are available. So here in London, we have a diverse background of healthcare um, with three large hospitals here. We have uh, healthcare uh, right down the street from Oxford campus. We've got Trudell Medical, which is one of uh, the leading medical uh, suppliers in Canada. We also have quite a medical history here. London is known as uh, the home of Fed Frederick Banting, who was the founder of insulin. Um, as many of you would know, being in medicine. Uh, so really amazing, unique uh, opportunities here in London and a lot of research happening in this community. So I want to take you through today uh, what this program will look like, what healthcare administration management will look like at Fanshawe and what we hope that you will get out of this program and the opportunities that will be available following. Ultimately, our goal is to equip you with the tools to be successful in a role in healthcare. And while that might sound broad, we'll be very specific as we go through our discussions around what courses are offered and where you might take those opportunities. But we've made this broad because we know that healthcare is changing and evolving but also the administration of healthcare is changing. Here in Ontario in the last year, we've seen the healthcare model shift quite dramatically. And then once again with COVID-19, we've seen healthcare shift again. So being prepared for an ever-changing landscape is something that we try to uh, work through and work with students on. 
So we see the top job skills in the future in healthcare administration management as a student should have novel and adaptive thinking. So again, being able to manage change in an, in an ever-changing environment, being able to be resilient, uh, having really good implementation skills, not only critical thinking, but also how to uh, of implementation and how to see a project through, and complex problem solving as another essential skill for the future. In this program, our goal is to teach you many things. One, it's how do you adapt to and how do you better understand the Canadian healthcare setting, um, which is a very interesting setting. And we talk about here what it looks like in the province of Ontario, but we also talk about what it might look like across Canada um, as we have different uh, healthcare models that are in place um, in other provinces or different ways of doing healthcare in other provinces. We also talk about financial practices. So we spend a lot of time uh, learning about financial analysis and understanding a balance sheet and making sure that you understand how to do billing, for instance, in the medical environment. So that if you're, as a manager, faced with a situation where you have to troubleshoot a billing problem with, uh, let's say, our Ontario health provider here, um, you will have that opportunity to know how to understand what the, the challenges might be and how to fix any errors. Um, we also look at things like how to save money running a clinic or a practice, how to streamline your services so that you can better deliver those services. We're really focused on teaching you how to be a leader. So how to lead a team in a healthcare environment. As a, as a healthcare administrator, you may not have delegated um, responsibility over individuals, but you have to oversee their work and they have to share your work, their work with you. So really leading in a collaborative way where you don't have to exercise authority, but you have the opportunity to lead. Um, we also focus a lot on communication in this program. It is essential that we spend our time looking at making you better communicators, um, as well as decision making. So we are using um, a lot of cases from Ivy and Harvard in this, in this particular program. Um, these cases are healthcare-based cases. Uh, and what we're hoping to do is to give you real-life scenarios where you can um, read through the case and work through this scenario with your classmates and come up with what you believe is the best strategy to solve a problem. Um, we believe that this is great preparation for our students in the workplace. And that's what we've heard from um, other people in the field is that this is a really key skill is making decisions and implementing them and being able to see that implementation through. Ultimately, our goal is to make you job ready. And we are spending a lot of time focusing on doing that. Um, I mentioned earlier on that we, when we were looking at preparing this program, we were talking to industry leaders, we were talking to physicians and um, people involved in healthcare here in the community. And they were telling us what skills they believed uh, students graduating out of this program needed to have. And so that's really what's informed uh, the courses that we've, we've come and we've put together. Um, one of the unique things that you'll find in this program is we have an emphasis on understanding research applications. So we have a quantitative and qualitative research program that are, or courses that you'll be taking in this program. And in those, you'll learn how to fill out and complete CIHR applications, for instance, which is one thing that we heard from the physician community here in Canada is a real challenge, is to find people with that expertise. Every successful graduate of this program will receive an Ontario College Graduate Certificate in Healthcare Administration Management, um, which we believe is a great asset and, and a, um, would be excellent on a resume to show your knowledge of healthcare from your uh, studies beforehand, as well as the Ontario experience and the healthcare experience that you have here in Canada. 
So graduates of this program, the one question that we get the most is what can we do when we're done in this program? So graduates of this program are very well suited for careers in entry management positions in a wide variety of healthcare settings, whether that be clinics, hospitals, private facilities, or organizations. So I saw a lot of you have backgrounds in dentistry and physiotherapy and other uh, medical specializations. And what we see is that a lot of people looking at this program are looking at it because it's, uh, it's something that they want to help to build their understanding of how to run a successful practice in those industries. And so this is a great opportunity to, to, um, to really perfect that knowledge. So the structure of the program. This is a two-year graduate certificate program. It's four semesters with 23 courses. Courses uh, cover topics like HR. So we focus on Ontario um, human resources and particularly around uh, Canadian human resources and looking at um, what legislation in Canada impacts employees. Um, we also talk a lot about uh, how to hire employees and how to use progressive discipline and other steps to, um, to help your employees to develop over, over time. We also cover finance, as I mentioned, billing, scheduling, ethics, healthcare law, um, and project management as some of the essential courses in the program, as well as what I mentioned, research. So this is a case-based uh, program. Some of the content is case-based. Um, I would say it's probably about 45% at this point that is case-based in these courses. And so a lot of the courses that we have in this program come from business management, um, as well as healthcare, uh, healthcare, health systems management and administration. So it's kind of a coupling of all of those things together. Um, and finding those courses that would align well, but also creating new courses that really fit well with, uh, with the skills that we were hearing that employers were looking for. What we're really going to do in the classroom is we're going to build upon your previous schooling and work experience. So we spend less time on medical terminology because we understand that most are coming with a healthcare background and therefore the medical terminology piece is already there. Um, but we do spend a lot of time on understanding regulation here in Canada and how that regulation um, impacts practices. We spend a lot of time talking about mid-level managerial skills. So how to manage and lead people. Um, we also spend time on marketing. What we found and what we heard from our educational um, uh, partners was that there's a real need for marketing skills as well as medicine becomes more uh, commercialized as well as more uh, accessible to people looking for maybe varied skills and to enhance practices. Uh, they've had to, for instance, look at um, opportunities that maybe in the past they haven't. So being uh, creative, entrepreneurial, and having marketing skills is really key right now at this time. We also look at applying your knowledge and theories in real life situations. So again, using case method, as well as using um, a culminating uh, fourth, fourth year, fourth level, sorry, uh, course that will take all the knowledge that you have from your programs of study beforehand, as well as all the courses that you've done. And we're going to put you into a real life scenario of a business uh, here or a practice here in uh, Canada. And we're going to ask you to help them to solve a real life problem. So the structure of the course, uh, as I mentioned, many of the courses are case studies. And then we've also got work integrated learning. So that's that experiential piece that we're looking to bring uh, to the classroom, where we will bring in outside experts and outside uh, companies and have you involved with their day to day decision making understanding the implications of perhaps a new strategy that they're looking to put in place. Again, our goal is to place you in the role of the decision maker in a healthcare context. 
And so we're finding really unique and creative ways to do that. I've provided an overview and you can also find this on the healthcare administration website, uh, management website, sorry, for Fanshawe, an overview of all the courses for the program. Uh, you'll see that we start in level one with a really basic uh, course on the Canadian healthcare system. So providing you with some really critical information on how this system works and, uh, and why this system has developed over time. So giving you a bit of a historical perspective as well. We also spend a lot of time in this program preparing you for the workplace. So we have two separate courses. You'll see in level one, workplace uh, prep for healthcare. And then you'll see also in level four, the, con the continuation of that course, which is workplace prep for healthcare too. This is where we spend time with you, getting your resume and your interview skills sharpened so that you're ready to go out and search for a job right as soon as you're done this program, uh, something full time and in your profession. We've also will be spending a lot of time, as I mentioned, um, in health systems administration and working on medical spreadsheet applications. So what we've heard from clinicians is that uh, a lot of their administrators um, need to have uh, really great Excel skills and really uh, a very firm understanding of how to create reports that they can use to influence decisions or, or bring forward changes in, in a practice. So this is something that we have worked with, um, with specialists in the field on providing uh, really good tools for administrators around um, how do you present data in a medical environment. We also, uh, we, we see that there's a lot of value with talking about project management and organizational structures in this program. We also spend some time in uh, looking at Lean Six Sigma and how Lean Six Sigma is being used in the healthcare environment here in Canada. In London, Ontario, they did a pilot uh, over the last few years around Lean Six in the emergency room to see how to uh, shorten emergency wait times using Lean Six Sigma. And so we bring in that information and, and provide you with some really interesting um, perspectives on looking at how to be leaner in medicine. We also spend uh, time on healthcare reporting tools. So how does uh, um, an administrator provide information in the best possible way in the to not only the physician, but also to enhance the practice, whether that be the clinical relationship, how the information is presented to the, the patient. So we, we're exploring as well in this program, the change over to electronic medicine. And the fact that patients are asking more of their physician than perhaps just a simple report, they're asking for a detailed write-up of what, they, what their health looks like a baseline level at this point. And so uh, that's something that we feel like is where healthcare is heading. And so we want to give you different perspectives on how healthcare reporting tools are changing over time. As I mentioned, we've got quantitative and qualitative research methods in this program and health marketing, um, where we'll talk about health promotion and how clinics and uh, organizations can better promote themselves in a competitive healthcare environment. And as I mentioned, we've got this capstone workplace project, which is in level four. Um, and that is the culmination of all of the knowledge and skills that you're, you're going to be studying over that next little while. And you'll be able to synthesize all that information and use it in a real client experience uh, in the classroom. So, our goal with this program is to keep class sizes small. So approximately 30 students per section, and we're looking at about two sections for every course. So uh, two sections would start each term. Um, we think that this is the ideal size for case method teaching, but also it's, it's very conducive of the environment at London South, which is a very small 
uh, campus feel, which makes it feel very personalized. Um, you know all your professors, you see them in the hallways when we're back in school, um, but it, it really does lend to a really great environment at the campus. So who are your professors? Your professors will be specialists in their field of study. Many of them are healthcare administrators themselves, business professionals, healthcare, um, either owners of clinics or owners of uh, businesses here in town that are healthcare related. Many of them also work for uh, London Health Sciences or other hospitals in, in our network. And they have tons of experience and management advice to share with you. Our basic structure for your studies, we are looking at blended courses, which would be three hours a week. Our goal is two hours of lecture or two hours of learning and one hour of independent online study. Um, there is lots of great opportunities to continue that study outside of the classroom as well. Um, we've got amazing resources built into the course. Uh, we've got excellent modules and uh, lots of great assignments to uh, engage you with in this program. So you can expect in a weekly uh, course that you'll have lots of readings to do from the textbooks, um, but also really engaging videos, lectures, assignments, quizzes, cases, and tests to help you prepare for the real world. Especially when it comes to some of the more practical skills, some of the more computer and analytical skills, we're going to give you a lot of time to practice those before you have to use them. So attendance in class is critical to pass this program. There are many valuation opportunities and many opportunities to practice the knowledge that you have before any testing, but we want to make sure that you're in class and that you're engaging with your professors and school really needs to be a priority for this program. Um, so just to tell you a little bit more about the London South Campus, we're very proud of this building. Um, not only is it a new campus, it's just for you. It is uh, vibrant. Um, it has lots of restaurants and food uh, nearby, lots of opportunities for employment nearby. Um, there's free car parking at the location. It's accessible by public transit. And the most wonderful thing is you have access to all facilities at the main Oxford campus as well as the London South Campus. Um, Right now, with everything that's going on with COVID-19, we're missing being at the London South Campus and we can't wait to get back there. So I probably went through that a bit fast, so I'm sure there are a lot of questions. Um, so looking forward to, to taking those. Uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Sarah, and let you go from there. That's awesome. Thank you, Corrine. It was like really good information. Um, I do have a couple of uh, things that I want to ask you um, because I was just thinking of uh, this as a student and I, there are a couple of things that I think our students would uh, want to know. So I think the first question that a lot of health professionals who are coming to this program would have is, I'm a health professional. I've never done Excel yes. or um, HR or finance. How does that look like for health professionals and how do we support them through that? Yeah, that's a great question. So we are taking our courses back to the basics. So we understand that this is not a skill set you're coming in with, and we are teaching you as if you are learning as a new learner. And um, the, our program is designed that way. We understand that we're not teaching students coming from a business environment, and we are making it... Um, interconnected to the subject matter, matter of healthcare, but we're really taking it from the basic level. Uh, and this is the great thing about your professors is that they have this knowledge of working with Excel and other programs, let's say um, billing software, et cetera, from the perspective of somebody in administration. So they're able to, to really hone in on what is it that is critical for you to know in order to be successful as an administrator. Awesome. Thank you. Um, another question, and I think it's 
Yeah, it's not really a question to you. It's just uh, something that I want to clarify to the students as well. And then I think I will ha I would like your input as well. Um, now, a lot of students coming to Canada with the healthcare background, their ultimate goal many times is to have a healthcare certification in Canada. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is a, an amazing way that they start because uh, it's a great introduction to the health system in Canada because it's so different from many other countries. And it's also giving them a skill set independent of the healthcare certifications in Canada as well. And the healthcare certifications in Canada are absolutely possible for international students, but the fact is it takes time. Mm -hmm. um, so eventually many of them might want to go through that. But my question is, my hypothetical question is, even once a student, let's say, has gone through this program, has worked in the healthcare admin, let's say for a few years, and eventually pursues their healthcare certifications in Canada, and they're working, let's say, in a healthcare field as a pharmacist or as a dentist, still, how will this skill set help them uh, to be successful in their business or their career? That is an excellent question. It's actually something that we considered from, from the uh, beginning of this program. Um, so something I didn't share earlier is uh, my family is also in healthcare. So my brother uh, was an international medical graduate and going through that process and watching him try to come back to Canada to be able to practice medicine or try to go into the States to practice medicine, I saw the difficulty that that created as well, um, that it isn't easy to get certified by your regulatory bodies. And so a lot of people with hopes and dreams to practice medicine in Canada, they're looking for a pathway. And this program, what I think is unique about it is that when you finish this program, the skills that you have will not go to waste. So if you end up practicing in your field following, these are skills that you will use um, to run your own successful business and your own successful practice. And it will make you a better manager and a better candidate as well. So I think that that's the differentiating uh, factor. Um, we are spending a lot of time, as I mentioned, in level one on Canadian healthcare and Canadian healthcare models. So that is something that will definitely be transferable right into their, um, their experience with their regulatory body. And we did look at um, what other, um, other licensing and regulatory bodies in Ontario were looking for in terms of criteria. So we were very mindful about those courses and whether or not there was opportunity for the student to take that knowledge and really apply it into their, uh, their future practice. And one thing about healthcare administration, I will say, is that I do notice that the jobs that are available are very flexible jobs as well. They're things that people can sometimes do from home. So it creates an opportunity to do something else while you study as well, um, perhaps to get qualified or certified in your um, original field. Awesome, thank you, Corin. That was great information for, for all the students. I do have a couple of questions that I, I would like to ask you as well. But before that, how about we do a poll of students around healthcare administration? Um, so here is a poll coming to everyone. I will actually just stop uh, the sharing on this. Okay. Uh, and I will just share a poll with everyone um, and answer this poll to the best of your knowledge. But as we go through the questions, Corin would add information about these poll questions as well. Awesome. So these questions are shared with everyone now. There are three questions and Corin, you, if you're able to see the questions, you can run us through the questions and the answers as well. Excellent. So question one is London, Ontario is renowned for healthcare and is home to three hospitals, true or false? Wow, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that is very true. <laughs> yes. We are quite proud of, uh, of London, Ontario and uh, the healthcare fields here in London. And uh, one of the most, uh, you know, when you get a chance when you're here to check out uh, the London um, Healthcare Hall of Fame, which is, which is also here. Uh, two, which of the following course areas does healthcare administration management program include? And we've got three options, business, HR, health systems management, and all of the above. 
And we've got a whopping 91% for all of the above, which is correct. <laughs> you were great listeners. Okay, our third question. Students at the London South Campus have access to all student facilities at the Oxford campus. And again, outstanding 100%, that's exactly right. You have uh, the ability to access amazing facilities at both locations. Awesome, that was a great poll. I think those are the best polling numbers I've ever gotten around oh. <laughs> correct, uh, correct um, uh, answers. That's amazing. So I, I do have questions and we have a lot of questions coming in from students as well. Um, Pranav, if you have questions or if you wanted to uh, ask something, please, you could go ahead as well. Uh, before we start um, going to other questions, uh, there, there are a couple of other questions that I do have. And uh, Corinne, you did talk about the class sizes of 30, uh, but I, I would like to focus on how that compares with, for example, a university setting mm -hmm. versus even regular fanshop program settings and versus this 45% uh, case-based program, healthcare administration management. So how does that differ in terms of numbers? Yeah, so I've been teaching at Fanshawe for three years. I've also taught at Western in continuing studies. Um, and so my class sizes have been sometimes quite large. Um, and so what we like about 30 and why I feel like it's the ideal number is when you're in a case-based program, um, when in this, program, there are a lot of cases. What you find is that if the course is too small, the discussion and the, the liveliness of that discussion isn't there. But when you have about 30 students, you bring all this experience and all of these students with this, these unique backgrounds into a classroom, and they are able to build off of each other and learn from each other in that setting in a really dynamic way. And so that's what we're really focusing on. We know that you are bringing previous experience and we are relying on that pre previous experience, but at the same time, we're trying to teach you something new. Awesome. Uh the uh, one thing that I'd like to talk about, and uh, Corin did speak about uh, some of that during her presentation as well, is the the courses. Uh, so in Canada, the program, Healthcare Administration Management, is called a program. And I know in many countries, we call this a course. Yes. Uh, but the subjects within those programs are called courses. So when Corin was talking about three hours per week, she was talking about each of the subjects. So yes. if there are five subjects, if there are six subjects, that 18 hours a week as a program, but in each subject, it's three hours a week. So that's just a point of um, clarification that uh, I, I thought would be helpful for the students as well. So I have a lot of questions coming in here. Uh, <laughs> I, so that's amazing. And I'm gonna try and take first a few healthcare academic questions. And I do have a few questions coming in for Pranav as well. So, um, yeah, see, uh, so um, I, I do see questions around the practicals. Uh, so the, the work placement, uh, the, the capstone work project that you spoke about, uh, I would say, I think it would be helpful to maybe elaborate on that a little bit, because the question here I see is, is that in a hospital? How is that done? Uh, so if you can elaborate on that a little, please. Yes, so uh, our goal is actually to bring the learning to you. So we think that it is much more beneficial if we bring the experts to the classroom to present the problem to you in the classroom setting. Um, we also see that for our students, and one of the things we've spoken to um, the facilities around, around London South about, is that there are great opportunities for you to get experience volunteering in um, and, and being involved in the healthcare field in the community. But we really see the value in you using the tools that you have, um, working in small groups in the classroom setting to solve a complex issue. So. Our plan is to bring the, the subject matter experts and the clinicians to you to discuss what kinds of scenarios they're seeing and present you with the problem that you'll solve. And that will be, that will be the, the experience that, that we think will be best. Awesome. Uh, the next pro uh, question is around uh, this program. Is this program in the London South Campus or the Oxford Campus? I can answer that question right away. This is in our fantastic London South Campus, which you can see 
right behind me as well. We're super proud of this, and this is an amazing facility. And Corin did talk about this uh, in the, uh, the in the presentation. The the location of the campus is such that the biggest mall of the city of London is right opposite uh, to uh, the London South Campus. So students have access to, of course, eating options, uh, opportunities for part time work, um, but also access to services. Uh, so that's something which students are very excited about. And when I go to London South Campus and I talk to students, uh, here is something that they tell me. And this is a little controversial, but I'll share this anyway. So I, and I ask students, how do you feel about London South Campus? And they say, amazing, because if I need to meet, let's say a, a student life coordinator in the Oxford campus, I have to wait one hour. Here, I have to wait five minutes. So the access to services is, mm -hmm. is very, very high for London South Campus students as well. So that's uh, a, a thing that a lot of students tell us. Mm -hmm. Corin, there is a question coming in around doctors or nurses. So we saw a lot of students who joined us today had pharmacy or dentist background. Mm -hmm. But if someone, uh, if there is a medical professional around nursing and all, uh, their access to healthcare certification in Canada also is a long process. So yes. for them, how do you see this program as a fit mm -hmm. for them? Yeah, so if you were to search today, let's say healthcare administration jobs in Ontario or in Canada, the one thing that we find that they ask for the most from clinician managers is for a nursing background. And so we see that as part of, um, part of the expertise level that they're looking for when they specify a healthcare background, either um, they're looking for somebody with the experience of understanding terminology, understanding uh, care in, in the environment that they're in, but also those really critical business skills, decision making and leadership skills. So again, I see this as an amazing fit with nursing. Um, however, if you're looking to practice as a nurse in Ontario, you, you do have to go through getting certified by uh, either the LP or the uh, Registered Nurses Association. And so that is an extra um, step that is outside of this program. But again, as I mentioned, it's definitely something that separates you as a nursing candidate to go through that, that, uh, that regulatory body as well. Thank you, Corin. Uh, Pranav, the next question is for you. Uh, the question is uh, from, a uh, from a student, Harshal, and his question is, uh, he's already paid the fee for a one-year program and he is uh, like that was in a previous intake probably but now he is uh, enrolled in this program so does he need to pay the fee again or does that fee carry over into this program so the fee has been carried over but i understand that you must have paid for health systems management so if you have received your visa you don't have to pay anything right now you can reach the college because there's a difference between the fee of health systems management and healthcare uh, administration program. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you received a visa, you don't have to pay anything right now. You can go to the college and uh, eventually you can pay your fee. Uh, however, if you've not yet uh, applied for your visa, we would recommend you to pay the remaining fee and then you will be applying for the visa post that. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. On that note, there was another question around visa. Uh, do they need to apply for, if they had a visa for another program earlier, do they need to apply for the visa again for this program? Uh, and uh, I know that, uh, can you share the answer uh, for that, yeah. Ranav? If you have the visa, of course, you don't have to apply it again. You can travel in the same visa. Uh, however, an extension would be required and uh, the International Center would be there to assist you with that. Fantastic. Uh, there is a question around COVID-19, and I, I think uh, I will try to answer this question. And the question is around, will the Canadian government allow international students to come to Canada for September intake? Uh, and I always say, if I knew the exact answer to that, I could make a lot of millions of dollars. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the fact is, uh, uh, we don't know right now. However, that does not mean that we don't have a plan for students. Um, there, there is a lot of planning involved in this and Fanshawe is planning every day for every possible scenario that uh, COVID-19 will throw in ahead of us. The great thing about the Canadian government's uh, practices around this is 
it's not their decision. The decision is with the medical experts. They've left all these decisions with the medical experts. Uh, our politicians don't decide on these things. Our medical experts dictate when the country or the province or the city is ready uh, to reopen, to have uh, international flights. Um, so as of now, we don't have a definitive answer, but that does not mean there isn't a plan. There are multiple plans available. And if a last three, two, two and a half, three months are anything to go by, we have tried to help international students in every possible way. Um, um, through the immigration has allowed students to start their classes online and do up to 50% of their program online. Uh, we understand you being in Canada is the real value of Canada and this program uh, and other programs. But what the Canadian immigration allowed students to start online and the online education does not hurt their postgraduate work permit eligibilities. Those are great actions that not every country has taken. Um, there was a poll done recently and in terms of the, the uh, things that the Canadian government has done, uh, it is among the best in the world. Um, the Canadian emergency response benefit, international students have become eligible for that. So if students were working and have earned a certain amount in the last 12 months, they are eligible for that kind of help from the government as well. Uh, and no other country has made international students eligible for that kind of financial help. So government has done the right thing. Uh, we do not know what's going to happen in the next four months. Uh, but whatever happens, the confidence I have is Fanshawe, uh, the government of Canada will support uh, as much as possible uh, people through that uh, process. So that was just my attempt at answering a lot of COVID-19 questions. Um, now, uh, Karan, there is a question, and this is interesting because most of our students are looking at coming to Canada and then making a career or a profession here. But there is a question around, okay, this healthcare certificate in Canada, how valuable can that be in, for example, India? So mm -hmm. it's an interesting question, uh, question, but you can attempt to answer that, please. I think that was something that we were also looking at from the beginning was, uh, would these be transferable skills no matter where you were in the world? And, and we see these as best practices in healthcare management, healthcare administration management. So we think that those would be transferable anywhere. Um, it really comes down to the bottom line for any uh, healthcare business. You're trying to increase your profits uh, and provide the best care. And so I think that that is definitely global in, in perspective. And so I think that uh, it would be applicable in, in both places. Awesome. Um, I do have an, a question from Angie around the cost associated with the program. Pranav, you want to give the approximate cost? It's a two-year program. Uh, what is the approximate cost per year of education in front of for this program? $17,112 per year. So and approximately $17,100 uh, per year of education. It is a two-year postgraduate program, uh, which makes it really unique because students can qualify for up to three years of work permit, uh, which is a great, great asset for a lot of international students as well. I'm trying to look through the next questions. Okay, uh, so according the next question is uh, around, how do we get the books uh, required for this program? Uh, do we buy them or will you provide them? So there are questions around that. That's a great question. So the textbooks that we have uh, sourced for the program, they are to be purchased by the students. And we have uh, also looked at in the case with COVID-19, if students do have to learn while they're abroad, uh, we have looked at online uh, textbooks for the program. Um, the textbooks are mostly for your level one courses. And then following that, your courses are mostly case-based. So in your fees after year, level one, um, your cases are part of your fees. So again, we really focused in level one on what kind of textbooks would you need that maybe that information would be things that you might refer to uh, going forward. And so we, we focused that those costs more on level one and then level two and onwards, there's fewer textbooks, but more cases and those cases, the fees for those cases are included in your fees. 
Awesome. Um, I do have, it's, this is not a question, but I do want to share this. This is from Mark and he says, I don't have a question. Just really excited to the forthcoming learning experience under Corin. Uh, he signs it off Mark. So thank you, Mark. We are excited to welcome you as, as well. Um, there is a question around the exact fee. Uh, and I do understand the exact fee might not be on the program uh, page right now. Uh, May is an interesting time every year because uh, our fee changes slightly every year. Uh, so right now we're going through that process. Um, the approximate fee is shared on the letter of acceptance, but the exact fee should be available by end of May because that's just a college-wide uh, process that goes uh, ahead for every program. It's not specific to this program. So, but uh, it'll be very, very close to the fee that Pranav shared with uh, everyone. Um, another question I have is how many days a week do we have classes? Uh, Karan, do you want to attempt to answer that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it will vary uh, based on your schedule. So schedules have not been created yet. Um, so we won't be able to, I wouldn't be able to give you an estimate of your classes, but I can tell you that level one and level three have the most amount of classes, actual face-to-face -face classes. Um, so you'll have to consider uh, the face-to-face -face classes that you'll have in those levels and putting in more time on campus for those. Um, however, uh, we are looking at what, um, how the, what we'll do for the schedule and the structure. And so um, I can't give you an indication of days of the week it will be, but uh, I will say that we have, we make every attempt to make the schedule meet the needs of students and um, around their requirements for part-time work as well. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, we have a question coming in from uh, our India representative, Paramveer, uh, and the question is around the schedule break in the program. Mm -hmm. So is there a decision around when that schedule break will be and if there is a schedule break in the program? Yes, so uh, we are looking at that right now. We do have a scheduled break planned um, and it would be a semester long break. So uh, if you enrolled for the fall, um, you would attend fall winter and then have the summer break. Um, if you enrolled in the winter, you'd have winter and spring and then a fall break, for instance. And so that's, that's what we are planning for right now um, in, in this program. Awesome. Um, there, there are uh, the next question, a couple of questions are from Bobbin and there are a couple of questions, but I'll ask them together, uh, uh, Corinne. And the question is first, is this like, is this program more theoretical or more practical? You did talk about the case studies, but this can be an opportunity to elaborate on that. And then the second question is about the campus. Uh, does the campus has a library and how does that, how does those services work? Yes, great questions. So uh, with all of our, our, our college-based courses, we are looking at the practical element uh, and operationalizing those skills and that knowledge as soon as you're done uh, your studies. So it is very practical and hands-on. So as I mentioned, you'll be learning about uh, applications that we use in the healthcare setting, um, electronic medicine, electronic medical records. And what we're doing is we're actually taking um, uh, information and information systems that were in use before um, with authorization and, and providing you practical experience to explore and learn in those environments. So uh, really practical and hands-on in that sense. The campus itself, um, we have great open learning spaces. So um, it's interesting when you said library, I thought of a, a closed uh, learning space, but at London South, our, our campus uh, provides so many different spots for students to gather uh, and study or do one-on-one -on -one study. And so there's, there's definitely that. For resources, for library resources, we do have library resources available on site at different times in terms of um, if you needed to speak to somebody about uh, accessing certain um, books or certain catalogs. But again, the Oxford location is your central location for those, those resources. And it is such a short trip down the street to get there. Um, and there's so many other great services there that uh, you'll, you'll want to take a visit there as well. Uh, absolutely. And I think 
uh, this is true for everyone in any program in any campus, the more you explore the city, the better it is for your networking, your opportunities, uh, et cetera. Uh, the campus is connected. The uh, London South Campus and Oxford Street Campus are connected with LTC, London Transit, uh, and all students get a London Transit bus pass uh, as well. And I would also say our library is not just library. And um, there are books and all that that you can access, of course, but our library also offers help around research. So if you want to do uh, academic research, um, uh, how to do that, uh, APA referencing, um, how to do that, there are tons of things that library offers help with apart from just books. Our library is not just about physical books, but uh, as Karin said, all those services you will have access through the London South Campus, of course, but you also have access to the, uh, the Oxford Street Campus as well. So um, there is a question. It's, I don't think it's a complete question, but the question is around the students, if the students are eligible to work, and I can give you a short answer to that. The first thing I always tell is your focus needs to be your education because that is what will get you a career in Canada. Uh, absolutely, you can do a part-time job, uh, you are allowed to work 20 hours per week uh, for, for part-time uh, while you are enrolled in our program. And if there is a scheduled break, you can work up to 40 hours per week. The next question, is, again, is around accommodations. Uh, so I, that is, I think, housing is what this one wants to refer to. So um, Fanshawe offers this amazing Fanshawe Cares arrival services. So before the intake starts, um, about two to three weeks before the intake starts, students can book uh, online services, uh, services online, and these services offer you an airport pickup from Toronto, uh, up to two nights free accommodation in a hotel in uh, London. And for if you're in the London South Campus, the hotel that you put in is right next to, right very close to London South Campus. So um, we have uh, partnerships with these hotels across the city because we have uh, multiple campuses around the city, but we will help you with the temporary accommodation. Uh, we will do a pre-departure briefing. So for example, for students from India, Pranav will do a pre-departure briefing. For students from Philippines, Ena will do a pre-departure briefing um, before your intake so that we will share information around how to go about finding housing. What are the rules and regulations around housing in the city? And what are your resources that you can use to find housing? So we will cover that. Uh, and those sessions will be called pre departure briefings. Um, Pranav, the, there is another question around uh, the program availability in VAS portal, so which is our application portal for international students. Uh, do you have a sense of, uh, I think the question is from India, so when uh, do you expect it to be open? Um, when do you expect it to be open around that as well? So uh, this program would be available on VAS very soon uh, for September intake. Uh, and uh, I think uh, early next week, we are going to start offering this program uh, for, more, for more students, yes. It will be available. And I would say uh, a lot of the other students have already taken this program. So our current applicants were offered this program. Uh, so th th there would be seats available, but uh, there would not be a lot of uh, seats available. So when it opens up, it will close very, very quickly. I would say that. For sure. Um, so there are, okay, let me look at academic questions because I see a lot of uh, non-academic questions. Um, okay, um, so uh, there is a question, uh, Corin, uh, around CPHIMS, CA certification. So are there any certifications that we are aiming for um, during this program? But uh, Digital Health Cert Canada certifications like CPIHIMS um, certifications, are there any other certifications that you're aiming for in this program through that? Uh, so at the moment, the program is not accredited for any certifications, however, um, the one that you've mentioned, the CPHIMS, uh, that one is uh, something that students have asked about because it 
we do have a lot of the same uh, course requirements as health systems management. Um, however, uh, you would have to take additional courses in health, um, health, man health systems management in order to qualify for that particular course. So outside of the program, you'd have to take those additional courses. Um, there is a question coming in from a student with a medical laboratory technologist uh, background. So how do you think that fits in with this program? Uh, I think it fits in very well. And the, the interesting thing about that background right now is it's so in demand right now in Canada, that kind of experience and knowledge set. Um, and so what where we add value to what you already know is by giving you the managerial perspective so that when you're finished your studies, you've got this skill set and knowledge around running your own type of facility or going into a management role in a facility, a lab setting um, that, that you can bring with that expert knowledge that you have in lab technology. So I think that's where, where this really adds to that and really builds on that and really expands your um, abilities to, to practice or to, um, to use the skill that you have already. Fantastic. Uh, the next question is around the exam pattern or how frequently exams happen or how grading happens. So if you can elaborate on that, Corinne. Sure. So it varies across each of the courses. So there isn't a standard um, methodology for how you're evaluated. We left that up to the, um, the professors in the program and the course developers to help decide what's the best way to be evaluated in a course like this. So few of the courses do have exams in level one. Um, in level two, we have, again, a few that have uh, exams, but as we move on up to the third and the fourth level courses, um, we know that the knowledge set that we're hoping for you to, to gain, it's really not something that is tested and evaluated in the um, exam setting. More of it is how you interact and how you provide the knowledge that you have in case discussions or in, um, in class assignments uh, that, that we'll be evaluating you on. Fantastic. Uh, the next question is from Santhya, and the question is, uh, I have four years of work experience in healthcare industry as a physician assistant. After I finish this program, uh, in what field can I get a job uh, and what kind of designations can I look at? So there is a question on that. Mm -hmm. So, what we're seeing, and when we did the evaluation of the scope of this program, we see that there is uh, an increase in demand for people in healthcare administration. So people that might be running a clinic or running a floor or, um, or in the healthcare environment in a way that they're providing managerial expertise as well. So for a PA, uh, PAs in Canada do not, are, are kind of new to the market. In Canada we have, um, or in Ontario, we have very few PA programs. Um, but it's interesting because in the PA programs that exist, they look at past work experience, but they also look at what other educational um, backgrounds you have. And so again, I think that there is an element of, of added value with this program into um, a, applying to another program like that. However, um, we know that students coming out of this program will be in demand uh, as healthcare administrators um, in managerial roles because we're already seeing the demand and, and already getting questions from people about uh, when we will see our first set of graduates. So that's, that's very encouraging. That's awesome. I do have a lot of questions coming in around uh, placements and I know when uh, we generally refer to placements as in-program placements, but I think students are talking about after graduating and how does the placement process work? So from my perspective, I would just say that the placement process is very different in Canada as compared to uh, many other countries. Um, you don't sit in a campus and companies come and uh, they pick and choose you. That That's not the way anywhere in Canada or a lot of the Western countries, the process happens. 
Um, what the program experts provide you is program expertise during the program and opportunities to network. Uh, so through events, through programs, your professors are industry professionals. That is the biggest networking opportunity you would have. Mm -hmm. uh, and our career service um, area will organize tons of events even before you start your program in the fall. There'll be a Fanshawe works workshop happening, which will start one week before this program. And they will focus on how to build a resume, how to make a LinkedIn connection, how to network in the city. What do employers expect from students? What do alumni have to say about their experience and their advice to students? So we will provide you the resources, networking opportunities, expertise in the program. It will be up to students initiative how well they utilize those resources. Pancho has the number one employment rate in Ontario. Um, and that is, of course, because of our amazing professors, our amazing career services, and most of all, our amazing students, uh, because they utilize those resources to actually go out in the community and look for opportunities. What we will provide you is the know-how of what kind of uh, industries are there in the city, uh, in the province, and uh, the tools to utilize and approach them. Uh, but how you do that is absolutely up to the students. So. Just that point of clarification, that's a question I think a lot of uh, students have uh, that, because I've seen that question multiple times. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, there is a question around, during the academic period of the, the, the program, are the professors available to the students all the time during the college hours in case if there are any doubts regarding, regarding the subjects uh, that they have or how, how do they approach the professors uh, Corin? Yeah, so we, again, one of the unique things about the London South Campus is the size of the campus. So um, you'll find that your professors are very accessible to you because of the size of the program and the campus. But also, um, we are very accessible online as well. So um, I know we have a policy to respond to students within 24 hours of an email. Um, we also have uh, office hours and a really great system called Qlist to uh, help navigate through and get an appointment and a text message to, uh, to get you in and out very quickly um, so that we make use of your time as well in the best way. Um, but yes, professors are very accessible in that sense. Um, again, one of the things that we are looking at is we have a lot of faculty that are currently looking um, exploring opportunities with our campus that are in industry. So many of them work during the day uh, and they take their time for your particular course. And I believe that's a huge benefit to you because you benefit from their network. But it also means that they might have very set hours that they're available. And uh, we, we help to um, accommodate that by making sure that students are very aware of when they are available and how best to reach them. Awesome. Great. Um, so what I will, there, there are a lot of questions coming in which are specific to countries. What I will do is I will share the staff directory uh, of uh, Fanshawe International Staff in the chat box. So um, if uh, Priyank, you are able to do that, um, through that directory, you can contact our country specific uh, staff, staff as well. So if you have country specific questions, for example, I see a lot of questions around fee payments and things like that. Those are questions that you can direct there. Some of those questions I'll post to Pranav as well, um, but uh, just specific questions, you can contact our country specific um, staff as well. One question, a question I do want to deal with is the three years postgraduate work permit eligibility. Um, and I, we did cover this during the program, uh, during the session, but um, because it's a two-year program, students are eligible for up to three years work permit. So that is, that is there for sure. Um, I'm going to look for next questions um, around academics. Okay. Um, there is a question around uh, Christmas and New Year break um, uh, from Twinkle. Uh, and the, the, so the short answer to that is yes, you do get a Christmas and a New Year break. Depending on the programs, it could be a week to two weeks. 
um, but it depends on the program. The great thing about our programs is when the program starts, you get all these details. So for example, when we were talking about there are 18, 20 hours of classes a week, you get the schedule at the start and that says for the most part, it stays consistent for the whole semester. So you can predict, okay, Thursdays, I have like six hours of lectures. On Friday, I only have two hours of lectures. There is predictability on that. And the same thing goes for your breaks as well. There is a learning week uh, in the middle of the semester as well. But for breaks also, you'll get the exact dates when you start the semester. Okay, there is a question around uh, the PEBC exam, which I know is a pharmacy certification. Uh, and the question is, is this course eligible for PEBC? The answer is no, this is not a pharmacy program. Uh, I would think this program is a healthcare administration uh, management program focuses on that. Uh, in the future, can you look at a PEBC certification? Yes, if you qualify and if you're able to do the certifications and the requirements that PEBC has, but this program does not qualify you for PEBC. Let's let be clear about that. Okay, um, Priyank, I, uh, Pranav, sorry, I will pose a few of these questions to you. Um, so there are a lot of questions around, okay, I, I took a one-year program. Now I'm going for this two-year program. Um, there first, the question is around fees. Okay, you already talked about it, but maybe clarify it again. Uh, and the second, the question is, oh, I'm, I was one year, now I'm two year. Uh, there is study permit extension involved. And then second, do I have to tell immigration somehow that I'm ch I've changed my program? So your thoughts about that, Pranav? Okay, so first, um, thank you for the question. I'm going to talk about the fee here uh, because many students who have been moved to this particular program had initially applied for health systems management uh, and they have already paid the fee for health systems management and there is a slight difference in the fee for health systems and healthcare business administration. Uh, here are a couple of uh, scenarios. So if you have paid a $2,300 uh, as if as your uh, deposit towards the tuition fee, you have uh, you have to pay the updated amount on the offer letter for healthcare business administration. Uh, the fee has been changed. Like there's a difference in the amount. If you have paid the fee for complete fee for health uh, systems management uh, and have received your visa, you don't have to pay anything right now. Once you're there in Canada, then you can pay the rest of the amount. If you have not yet received your visa and paid the full fees towards health systems management, it is better that you pay the remaining fee. Uh, that is whatever the difference between the fee is and then apply for the visa. So that's how the uh, fee scenarios needs to be looked into. Uh, I see there's one more question here about the student who has paid $2,300 and when exactly they have to pay the remaining fee. So, uh, just to let you know that you have an extension till 10th of June, then you can, for you to pay the rest of the amount uh, because of the lockdown situation currently in many of the countries. And this is very India specific I'm talking about because I understand that the student is from right. India. Yeah. Yes. So this is absolutely even in other cases, I think there is a, uh, there is a fee invoice that comes to the students. And I think the deadline date uh, would be uh, somewhere, it would be very close to the date that you have, provided uh, Pranav. Um, the, the other question uh, around that would be the students, the study permit uh, extension Pranav. Yeah. So uh, the study permit, uh, if you have received your visa already, which is for a year for health systems management, and then now you've changed your program to healthcare administration. Uh, of course, the extension of the visa would be required. It's better that uh, you reach Canada and uh, then you apply for the extension because the immigration officers at the uh, international center will assist you in for the extension. Right, and I would also say we do immigration workshops at the college and we help students with the process of uh, visa extension. Uh, there is no charge for that service. It's done by our immigration uh, consultants um, uh, who are college employees, free of cost through a workshop uh, but that's there. The other thing is, if you've changed your program, what do you need to inform the immigration office around that? 
So all of you, once you get a visa approval, you have a, a portal that you can go and access and update your um, uh, program as well. So it's a very simple online process. You can do it from Canada, from India, from Canada as well. It's not a make or break, right? Like it's not, you have to do it. It's good to do, uh, but you can do it through the online process. You don't have to call anyone. You don't have to do any of that. If you change your program, there is an online process for that, which uh, once you've received your visa, the portal that you have, you can access through. So I'm just running through the questions. Uh, if there are any other academic questions left. Um, yeah, so there is a question uh, from our, our, our representative from China. And the question is around, uh, Karin, how do you see COVID-19 impacting the, the healthcare industry? Are there changes that you expect? Do you think the demand will go up, down for healthcare professionals in, of course, healthcare, but also administration management? Yeah, it's actually uh, a question that's been that I've been asked a few times lately. Um, what we've seen in the past few weeks is we saw we've seen an increase in job postings in healthcare administration. Um, however, we're not sure if that's a short-term blip or if it's a long-term impact. Um, before COVID-19, um, one of the things we were seeing was a change in the healthcare uh, modeling in Ontario, where we were moving away from um, having uh, our, our local health authorities and our local um, health networks uh, into a more de-streamed approach where we were having um, less of these LIN models, so local health integration networks, and we were moving to more of a centralized model, um, which was creating more administrative work in, in practices and administrative work in the local environment to be shared with partners uh, elsewhere in Ontario. So definitely some changes going on in that sense. The interesting things in the last few weeks we've seen We've seen federally, Health Canada has come uh, up with new funding for electronic medicine and more administration. So we don't know what that exactly will look like yet, but we do see that there are going to be very necessary changes in the way we do medicine. In Ontario, what happened was uh, physicians were moved from primary care face-to-face -to, -face to primary care via telephone medicine. And we weren't set up for a structured telephone medicine. So we didn't have billing codes. We didn't have administrative procedures. We didn't have the software that was needed yet in all of our clinics. So that has created a whole set of new um, challenges for, for clinicians, but also for their staff. And so we are seeing a lot more of a need for uh, for change and changing skills and more technological skills and more administrative skills. So it will be very interesting to see where this, this takes us. Yes, uh, I think it's really interesting how um, COVID-19 has uh, fast forwarded the digitizing of a lot of things. And I think uh, we're seeing that kind of impact in healthcare as well. But I think uh, people have found a new newfound appreciation for healthcare um, uh, around the world. I think, Corinne, that's the right moment to talk about the healthcare system in Canada because I see students applying from uh, China, India, Philippines, Brazil, um, and a lot of those countries don't have a public healthcare system or a single payer mm -hmm. system uh, uh, as we do here in Canada. So can you talk a little bit about that, how that system works in Canada, the single payer, the centralized healthcare system? Sure. So we have a universal model of healthcare in Canada. Specifically, Ontario, we have um, uh, a system that is basically um, built by physicians or care or, or care providers to the government. Um, things like physiotherapy, dentistry are still considered uh, not covered under this system. However, there are times during different governments where they will allow certain services to be covered. Um, an example of that would be we have vision care up to age six that is covered in Ontario. Um, so those are always changing and evolving, and that's something that we will continue to, to update within the course and the program. Um, but 
the way that healthcare is delivered in Ontario, what we've seen is that uh, this government has really put the Ontario government and the Conservative government here in Ontario has put a very uh, big focus on streamlining inefficiencies in healthcare. So they are really considerate of the bottom line. And so that has really helped to shape where we're heading in healthcare as well. Um, they want to see that this huge part of the Canadian tax, the Ontario tax dollar is really well stewarded. And so they've, they want to know in your practice, what is it that you're doing to help save and create efficiencies? So it's not just about healthcare from the perspective of when a patient comes in with an issue, but it's preventative as well. And so I think we're going to see more of a push for preventative medicine, which again comes down to understanding your baseline uh, medical needs, which is something I think we'll see a lot of change in as well. Awesome. Um, so we, there have been a lot of questions in total. I think we've answered 80 questions between speaking and uh, typing the answers. But I do have last two questions, which are academic that I'd like, Corin, if you could answer. So the first question is around the Excel program that we need to, uh, the Excel course that the students need to pass. So there is a question about how deep is that question? How in-depth knowledge is provided in that? And um, like what are kind of the minimum scores in that Excel pro, uh, subject that students have to do? Yes, and, and I know that this could uh, raise the, this, the stress levels for some students because that's not something they're familiar with to begin with. But as I mentioned, we do spend a lot of time teaching students from the basic level of Excel or spreadsheet management to the more in-depth. So how to do pivot tables, how to prepare presentations, how to prepare graphs, how to um, really present data in the best way, how to privatize data in Excel uh, so that you can share it across a medical network and things like that. Um, so we do provide very in-depth uh, knowledge, but we have great resources that have been provided and they're practical. So each student will be given, and it comes with your, um, with being a member of Fanshawe Student Union, you get access, free access to Microsoft Office, and uh, you're able to then use those applications, um, as well as when you purchase the textbook, you get access to all of the textbook providers testing and their um, their tutorials and everything else and practice sessions. So you'll be able to actually go into a program and explore and use the tutorials to teach yourself while you're also being taught in the classroom. So there's going to be a lot of support for our students in this particular subset of knowledge. But let me tell you, it is a differentiating type of knowledge because when you have this expertise, um, there are so many different pathways and avenues that open up to you to be able to do medicine uh, electronically, remotely, and also to do it in a more efficient and robust way. Awesome, thank you. Um, so the last question of the day, uh, we will take from Philippines. And the question is around the eligibility. And uh, for this program, we have, say, we have said uh, that we prefer a healthcare degree. We also say we can look at other backgrounds on a case by case method, uh, case by case uh, uh, way. Um, the stu this student, I think, has a degree in business but has a lot of work experience in health insurance. Mm -hmm. um, so that is interesting. And of course, we, of course, if there is a specific question like that. Uh, the email should come and we will then have it evaluated by Corinne. Um, but uh, wh what can you tell us about that kind of background, Corinne? Yes, yeah, so I think that's an excellent question. So where you have the business knowledge, um, you know, what you're looking to make up for is the healthcare knowledge. Um, so we do have healthcare related courses, as I mentioned, the Canadian health systems, we cover terminology in level one courses, uh, especially, um, but uh, I would say that we'd have to evaluate that expertise and that knowledge 
um, it is definitely a pathway following this program to uh, get into health insurance here in Ontario and here in Canada. This is definitely something that would fit in very well with that, um, but we would need to evaluate it on a case by case basis. Awesome. Um, thank you so much. And as I said, I've taken the last two questions um, for the session. Uh, I would like to thank you, thank everyone uh, from uh, across the world who joined us today. In the chat box, I have shared the link of the international staff directory. So if you wanted to get in touch with someone for applications or questions around fee payments, uh, please contact your regional representative. I have mentioned the link of the session. Um, uh, so thank you so much for joining us, Karan. Thank you for the amazing uh, specific expertise that you provided. Uh, any last words you have for the students? No, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to get to speak to you all today. Uh, we hope to welcome you into the fall or the winter term uh, of this program. We are very excited, um, very proud of the London South Campus and the opportunity to uh, welcome you there. So thank you very much. Be safe and be well. Thank you. Thank you, Prana, for joining us uh, today as well. And uh, there are thank yous coming in from the students now. Uh, students saying all of my questions were addressed and I'm relieved now. Thank you so much, Karin, for answering all these questions. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us and we will be happy to help you students. And the recording of this session will be made available to all the students who attended today. So thank you again. Uh, we look forward to welcoming you here in Fanshawe College, Fanshawe London South Campus, and uh, have a great day ahead of you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining.